Hello guys, I'm Florian Cordon from the Pattern Recognition Lab at FAU Erlangen-Nürnberg and today I'm happy to present you our new augmentation technique that is called Font Augmentation. And the purpose of this technique is uh, to aid generalization of deep learning algorithms that work on intraoperative X-ray images. And in particular, our method makes those learning algorithms more robust to any kind of image clutter, which often comes in the form of hardware or surgical tools. This image phenomenon is a frequent problem in orthopedics and trauma surgery. Okay, so let's start with our motivation, how we came up with this idea and what problems we usually face when working with such intraoperative data. When you think of an X-ray image, you would normally assume uh, the images to look like those examples here on the left side. And if you want to apply uh, learning algorithms to perform any kind of task on these images, so let's assume you want to segment the bone area. These images appear to require the naive data corpus to do so. The bone is nicely delineated from the surrounding soft tissue. Uh, the images have good overall contrast. And in general, we got a very homogeneous intensity distribution of the bone structure overall. However, when we work in an intraoperative setting, we usually observe different kinds of objects in the image which overlay important image structures. So for example, this can be hardware implants like screws and plates, which are inserted into the patient uh, upon fracture reduction, for example. And you can also see examples of this here on the right, on the right side. What can also be some temporary surgical tools, which are between the X-ray source and the patient, uh, like for example, guide pins, drilling machines, and so on. And these objects oftentimes occlude important image content and anatomical structures, so that our learning algorithms uh, have a hard time to infer any meaningful results, um, especially when we are interested in a very precise localization. This leads us uh, to our research question. Um, we wanted to have a method which is able to aid in generalization of such troublesome X-ray images. And in particular, we wanted a method which enables us to only train on images which have little to none occluding objects. Uh, like you can see here, the conventional X-ray images on the left side and the intraoperative images uh, in the middle. But at the same time, uh, allows us to infer nice predictions on images, uh, like you see here on the right side, where we have a lot of occluding objects. Um, we also wanted to be independent of any solution um, which is tailored to a particular set of objects. So um, what we came up with was a very simple but intuitive idea, which is based on using various letters and symbols from different open, son open source fonts. There is a vast amount of fonts out there, which come in numerous shapes and forms. And what we wanted to do is to approximate the real object shape and intensity distribution by using these fonts and sampling symbols from them and uh, then composing them in a smart way. Um, here you can see some examples of these font compositions uh, at the bottom side of the uh, slide and you immediately see that you get a quite diverse shape impression. Um, but how are these objects constructed in detail? We now go through the algorithm step by step and on the left uh, side you can see each instruction and on the right side uh, you can see the corresponding image examples. And to compose a string of symbols, we first sample a random font out of a pool of several font examples. So in this example here, we have six different options. Uh, and then we decide on a string length. In this example, we randomly uh, sampled two, which means that we have two symbols we want to overlay with our selected font. And these symbols are then drawn from the alphabet. Um, which in our case are all numerals and uh, Arabic letters. And uh, if needed, we can repeat this process multiple times to compose shape impressions, uh, impressions from multiple fonts. In the next step, we render our symbols so that they are centered on a black background. Um, we also zero pad afterwards so that the text height uh, has always the same ratio when compared to the background image. 
before continuing with any kind of uh, pre-processing. Uh, we can then also use different geometric uh, transformations, for example, Gaussian blurring or smoothing, as well as intensity scalings to better approximate the image impressions we get from real objects. And uh, we can also do some kind of uh, special augmentations to simulate some screw structure. And with all these steps performed, we can now do an image blend of the original image and our rendered symbol string. Uh, here you can see some examples on the results of this process. And we can see that we achieve a broad spectrum of different shapes, as well as different degrees of overlap based on the different uh, fonts we use. And for example, in the first image, it is actually pretty hard to tell uh, that these are artificial objects and not real tools between the X-ray source and the patient. To better evaluate our approach uh, and certain characteristics of it, we also asked some auxiliary questions. Um, first, we wanted to know to which extent the intensity of the overlaid object is important. Is it necessary for the algorithm to retain some residual information behind the tools, uh, which are not 100% opaque? And following this line, how important is a realistic shape of our overlaid object? And is it necessary to only include objects that are related to the task at hand uh, and the data corpus we are training for. For this reason, we decided to perform a five-fold experimental setup. And we started with an augmentation technique, which approximates shape and intensity information as close as possible. And we used 2D projections from task-related 3D CAD data and computed the same image plan to get our training images. To get rid of any residual intensity information, we then binarize this augmentation technique so that we have a uniform intensity distribution over the complete object region. Uh, a similar setup was then done for the font augmentation. Uh, here we have to note that our font augmentation yields less realistic shape, uh, but still can achieve realistic intensity distributions. And again, we performed the binarized version. And as a last strategy, we performed a coarse dropout of image pixels uh, where neither shape nor intensity information are retained. And here you can see some examples for uh, both the overlay with projections of 3D CD data here on the left side and the dropout of coarse image regions uh, on the right side. Um, all five strategies were evaluated on extra images of the knee joint. And if you think back to our initial research questions, we wanted an algorithm which performs well for different kinds of overlaid objects, despite having little to none such image characteristics in the training corpus. And because of that, we selected 223 conventional radiographs and 23 intraoperative fluoroscopies without overlaid objects for training. And for testing and evaluation, we used 23 intraoperative fluoroscopies with various occlusions, uh, such as drilling devices, guide pins, screw and plate implants, or surgical suction tubes, as you can see here on the right side. For evaluation, we assess two common spatial tasks. On the left side, you see annotations for the task of bone segmentation where especially the contour region is hard to segment precisely. And on the right side, uh, we can see two annotations for the second task of anatomical landmark localization. And these landmarks are needed for surgical planning of a specific ligament reconstruction. And as you can see, the positional variability of each landmark is encoded by a Gaussian distribution, uh, which is centered on the actual landmark coordinate. Um, before training, we bring the images to a common scale of 256 by 256 pixels and perform an online augmentation scheme with uh, rotation, scaling, horizontal flipping, and linear contrast scaling. Uh, for the trials, which work with the font augmentation, 15 different open source fonts were used, and the sequence length and the number of sequences were randomly sampled to be either one or two. 
We use the default unit architecture where we only added instance normalization, um, which showed to work well for X-ray related spatial tasks. And as for the loss functions, we used a separate binary cross entropy term for each bone we wanted to segment. And we used a per pixel intensity comparison for the landmark likelihood encodings with a mean squared error loss. Prior to training, we did a 150 step hyperparameter optimization with random search on a subset of the training data. Um, with that, we can guarantee to have sufficiently good starting point of all learning related hyperparameters. And the exact uh, hyperparameters you can find here on the slide. And each of the presented augmentation technique was uh, repeated for 10 different random seeds so that we can also report some variance measurements. What you can see here is the visualization of our results. Um, in particular, the MIU metric for the proposed augmentation techniques. Uh, we listed the corresponding performance for each bone separately and placed a color dot uh, so that you can find the respective bone in the reference image on the right side. In general, we can see that the base model yields the worst performance by quite a big margin, with all other augmentation methods uh, having an increase in the MIU metric. But interestingly, when we look at the performance of the binary versions, they perform better on three or four bones, with a coarse dropout achieving almost the same performance as fond augmentation. And the possible explanation for this observation is that the implicit in-painting results in a stronger regularization effect. And we can also explain the lower results for the fibula bone as there is a big overlap of the proximal fibular head with the posterior tibia. And uh, retaining intensity information in these areas uh, is important to delineate in these overlap regions. And when we look at the contour error, which we report here as the average surface distance, the results show similar trends and confirm our interpretation we made of the IOU overlap metrics. Especially for smaller bones, the proposed augmentation techniques can significantly reduce uh, any spikes of the bone contour in ambiguous regions. In comparison, the results for the landmark localization task have a little bit more contrast. In general, there is a high variance in positioning uh, of landmark 1, which is marked here in green. And this is due to low interclass correlation between different surgeons, so that also the annotation ground truth is ambiguous. In contrast, we observe a low variance in positioning of landmark 2, which is marked in yellow. There we got a more sound anatomical definition and greater interclass correlation between different surgeons. Also, uh, guide pins are oftentimes in this area of the Blumensart line, since many attachment centers of different ligaments of the knee joint are located there. We now conclude our talk and present you some points we want to look into in future work. Our proposed augmentation technique, font augmentation, successfully makes uh, learning algorithms, especially those which work on spatial tasks, more robust towards occluding objects on intraoperative X-ray images. But also a complete dropout of coarse pixel regions yields a similar performance for bigger bones, which uh, confirms that in-painting is indeed a helpful auxiliary task to learn a generalized shape. And interestingly, for most anatomy, we evaluated a realistic tool shape and intensity distribution along the tool surface are not important. In future work, we should definitely extend our evaluation to multiple anatomies and report our observations on a public dataset with similar occlusion problems. Also, we want to evaluate uh, whether different symbol alphabets achieve different results and if a positioning strategy other than randomized overlay leads to different generaliz generalization behaviors. With that said, I want to conclude this talk and want to thank you for watching this video. 
Um, besides other projects, we are currently doing an extended evaluation of our technique and hope that uh, this will be available later this year. Thank you very much.